All right, I guess we'll wait on the Hactos because I have I have Embercleave mana. I have it for three, but I don't know that that really matters. Like, do I need to even swing in with the speaker, or can he just stay back as a blocker? You know what I mean? I think you're just gonna chill back there, buddy. Another one I could pull. I could pull a third one out. I've seen three Winotas in the top 14 cards. What's up, everybody? My name's Shane. Today we're gonna be diving into a great combination of two things I love in Magic: Angels. And Winota. So, uh, you know, it's pretty straightforward. I wanted to play Bane Slayer, literally a whole inspiration for this deck. I saw it while I was scrolling through the cards. Y'all know that's generally how I come up with my deck ideas. I'm just sort of scrolling and I'm like, oh hey, that looks fun. Let's let's do that today. So Bane Slayer was the the chosen one today, so to speak. I saw it and I was like, man, it's been such a long time and I really love this card. Five mana five five flying first strike, life link, and the protection from demons and dragons is you know semi relevant now yeah i won't say fully relevant but sort of so uh yeah i figured let's let's do this people might appreciate it and i'm for sure gonna appreciate it so angels and winota how do we get there what are we playing to do this and uh how well does it work well a lot of questions that need answered and uh we're, we're gonna answer them i don't know <laughs> down at the bottom end we have three copies of selfless savior to help us protect our creatures i know it's not an angel but you know who doesn't need a good doggo right beside their humans so, Speaker of the Heavens, great way to create angels. Of course, once you get to that uh, 27 life marker, you can tap it, start creating angels. Also, you pull it out with one note every once in a while, which is, you know, it's okay. It's at least a vigilance creature, which means that, you know, after it gets tapped and untapped later on, you can swing in and not have it fully go tapped. Anyways, we also have Usher of the Fallen non-human here also non-angel but you know whatever we can create these human warriors off the backside. it's a 2-1 and it procs winota which is a nice thing one mana 2-1 that procs winota and it's hard to beat that we have two copies of season hollow blade additional human to to, blah, 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 to to pull out um and we actually have another card that comes down in the two drop slot which you know honestly i feel like i need to increase one of these two uh if not the season then the stalwart for sure Stalwart Valkyrie, very nice. Oftentimes, you'll drop a speaker, you'll drop an Usher turn one, and they will immediately get, you know, whatever, shocked or heartless act or whatever the hell the opponent's like. No, 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 you're not having that. Bone Crusher, even, right? Stalwart Valkyrie is kind of the answer to those answers, right? Two mana, exile creature card from your graveyard. We're not a graveyard deck, so that's fine. And then you can get this down, which is a flying 3 2 on turn two, which is insane value. So, Turn one, you get down speaker or usher, and the opponent's like cocky and they remove your stuff. Then you're like, well, gee, thanks. Now I have an angel, right? So again, stalwart Valkyrie, very nice. Also, it procs Winota, so you have a flying 3-2 that procs Winota. It's a little evasive. It's great recipient of Embercleave, all that kind of stuff. Uh, season's end, of course, is just hard to kill. We have one copy of Heliod because I think it's a really, really good card. One, if you can turn it online, it does proc Winota. Two, giving lifelink to you know arnie whenever it can bolster up off the winota or hactos or really anything anything on your side of the board can be a huge game changer and since we are going with the speaker and the righteous valkyrie here in a minor degree um you know i kind of, kind of wanted to aid it a little bit anyways three copies of skyclave apparition for some more removal and of course winota procs arnie we can pull out with the winota and of course the one one uh, mana boast ability is pretty good. We have one copy of Felidar Retreat for those times when you're just not seeing Winota. It's really good at bolstering up your lower end, building you cats, which can proc Winota. Uh, you know, it's a whole slew of things. So it's a nice four drop just in general. One copy of Legion Angel on the main board, three over here in the sideboard. I did remember them today, so that's good. Anyways, again, procs Winota. It's a four three flying. It's just, it's just a great card. Uh, Hactos, we've seen before. We know that song and dance. Kenrith, we're going to be pulling out with Renota. We know that song and dance. Uh, Bane Slayer, the whole inspiration for the deck. And then in the top end, we have two copies of Embercleave and two copies of Amirius Call. We also have two copies of Shatter Skull down here that I didn't really mention. But again, we've seen these these uh, cards before. It's just the combination that is important, right? So I won't talk your ear off as far as the cards go. As far as the execution goes, we had a little bit of uh, bad luck today, if I'm going to be honest with you. But I think the deck can still perform. A couple notes I would say about it. Maybe lower this top end a little bit. I just kept drawing my top end cards. And, you know, honestly, this is a land. And, well, that's a land. This can realistically cost four mana and... Well, I, I just don't see this as too much of a top end, given most of these are one-offs, right, um, as compared to this. So we, we were having a little bit of bad luck today. Y'all know how my luck goes. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. 
Um, I don't think it's a true testament to the deck, but I do think that this deck has a little bit of merit to it. And if you're someone that really just enjoys playing Angels and enjoys playing Winota, this is a, this is a pretty fun one. Um, again, Star Wars is a very cheap card, so you don't have to worry about dropping all of your rares and uh, mythics, mythic rares, whatever, before the next set, right? Don't, definitely don't go out and craft cards to play the deck, but if you have the cards already, then uh, I do recommend it. Anyways, enough rambling for me. Time to dive into the deck. Oh, uh, also, hit that like, leave a comment, subscribe, uh, you know, all that YouTube stuff. Anyways, let's go play some math. Is Sizer? Is, is Sizer? I Sizer? <laughs> I don't know. We're going to keep this hand. You know, I don't really like keeping hands with double legendaries. It's just it's a big thing for me. But essentially what I'm weighing this out to be is would this hand be better than a, another random uh, six cards? Because essentially if, if you have two legendaries, one's a dead card, you are starting with six, uh, so to speak. You know, one could get removed, whatever. But that's that's to be seen. Anyways, Meyer Triton, put his play in Rakdos Snow. Oh, Snow. <laughs> uh, you know, we're just drawing out our large creatures right now, and it, it's not what we want to see. We want to see lands. Lands. We have 26 in the deck. I assume we can we can find four on, on curve. Could be a crazy presumption of me. Hey, and here's where that extra copy of Winota is going to pay out for us. <laughs> we did kind of just give away, hey, I'm a Winota deck, but, it, you know, that's... It's not too much information to go off of, unless you're, you're a counter spell deck. And they're not, they're, they're uh, I'm going to steal your creature and then sacrifice it kind of deck, right? Which I hate, by the way, I hate. Grateful that Winota is above the, the 3 CMC threshold. See, I knew we were going to hit that land. Haven't hit any creatures in between. You know, I got a, got a ton from one to three, but you can only see the selfless and the top end. And the top end. Might need to add a Valakut Awakening to this deck. Maybe that's maybe that's where I'm going wrong. It's Rakdos Cosmos. I like the name of that deck in the, in the very least. <clears throat> All right, so that Fable would have been great next turn if we could have got it with the Felidar Retreat. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, so we just go for Winota, swing in with Selfless, and, you know, let bygones be bygones. See where we end up. Speaker of the Heaven. Not exactly the, the powerhouse I was looking for, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I guess, you know, we already have all the powerhouses in our hand. How am I supposed to draw them out of my deck? Yeah. Anyways, um, they're just going to take it. Yeah, I mean, it is only two damage, you know, <laughs> what are you worried about? On this next turn, I can Ember Cleave the Winota, which is a lot of damage, and it allows Winota to swing through my Triton. And of course, all this is given that Winota can actually live, because... Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, if Winota doesn't live, we can also play Hactos, which is really strong and potentially has protection from my Triton. We could play Felidar. <clears throat> Turgrid, God of Fright. That's going to be all they do for right now. I'm okay with that. I'm, I've thought about it. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <clears throat> Another, <laughs> hmm. Hey, game. Here's an idea. Quit giving me two of everything. This isn't Noah's Ark. Fuck off. Fuck right off. Alright, I guess we'll wait on the Hactos, because I have I have Embercleave mana. I have it for three, but I don't know that that really matters. Like, do I need to even swing in with the speaker, or can he just stay back as a blocker? You know what I mean? I think you're just going to chill back there, buddy. Another one, I could pull I could pull a third Winota out. I've seen three Winotas in the top 14 cards. Motherfucker. <laughs> Alright, so if I do this, Winota does get the Indestructible already. Which means we wouldn't really need Embercleave to do it stiff. I, you know, I honestly, I, I kind of want to decline. I'm not a huge fan of just replacing one card with another when it doesn't equate to any actual value. And it might actually equate to lesser value for us. I got to decline. <sighs> this is stressful. 
This is stressful. <clears throat> I'm really wanting them to block with Turgrid onto the Winota. They're not going to, but eh, you know, whatever. Whatever. This is still a lot of damage, right? Still a lot of damage. Alright, so they're down to 13. Let's hope they can't make us... What is it? Sacrifice or discard? Sacrifice or discard? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the nice thing is I didn't sacrifice my selfless, right? For Winota or anything. So they don't give my selfless back. Hallelujah. Claim the firstborn. Well, that's going to be them sacrificing. Okay, so that's good. A little loophole in the system. If we see a land, I'm going to drop Felidar Retreat. I'm, fa I'm fairly sure about that. Because, you know, then we just start getting cats out the wazoo. And they are free Winota Prockers. They can even take an Ember Cleave if we want to, you know. Not a, not a big deal. They're going to make us discard here. And they get whatever we discard. They get to have whatever we... <laughs> That's not good, because we only have a hand of really, really fucking awesome stuff. <laughs> yeah. All right, our our best way to victory is Hactos Impercleave, so. Yeah, you know. It is what it is. That's what happens when you, when you only draw your top end. But y'all, y'all know that we've all been through this song and dance before. Hello, hello. Mm -hmm. I like how long they're taking to make their decisions. Really uh, calculated, analytic, slow rolling. I'm assuming they have a village rights, and they're gonna sacrifice that speaker of the heavens. I just wish they would get on with it. You know, come on. I ain't got all day. I see, like, seriously, I, I don't have all day. I got a, a job and, you know, all that kind of stuff to get to. It's just kind of surprising that this asswipe is taking three years to decide to press the attack button. Thank you kindly. They didn't even. You, oh. Asshole. <laughs> all right. So if I drop you, you don't really do anything for me right now, because I don't, I don't have the life or any of that. Yeah, let's go for the Hactos. Hactos! Uh, do I swing in with Winota? If we do, we get rid of their Kroxa. We also would get to deal a grand total of four damage. You have protection from uh, everything but the Kroxa. You can also deal 14 damage on the swing of Ruski. Swing in like this, we could deal 10. They might potentially block the Kroxa to the speaker. Not a big deal if they do, though. I'm not honestly concerned about that in the least. So, Not concerned in the least. I assume they would block my Winota. That just makes good sense for them. We're doing this so we can get rid of the Kroxa and line our Hactos up for lethal. Now, they might have some other plans for our Hactos, but we're just going to hope that it's protection barrier is enough to keep it keep it going keep it alive and of course it, it can deal 14 damage just on the punch through next time right oh no because ember cleaves a six oh <laughs> i can't target it with ember cleave that's fine we can still deal six damage um and uh, yeah you know maybe maybe we'll get down a little kenrith action oh we don't have enough mana why did i think we had enough mana for kenrith that's strange anyways you know, he's still got Hakdos to block with, and he does have protection, so he can just knock that Turgard right out. Colossal Plow. This is a such an awesome deck from the foe. Honestly, I really like the Cosmos Elixir and the uh, Colossal Plow in, in this Rakdos theme here. Uh, it's cool. It's cool. I'm going to have to steal that, by the way. If, any, if anyone's wondering, like, oh, hey, Janet, you going to try to rebuild that bonus deck? Oh, most certainly. Most certainly, this is some this is some good stuff. Rakdo Snow with a Colossal Plow action and Turgor, that just is beautiful. Now, they, they don't have Felidar, that's my Felidar. But, you know, it's whatever. It's whatever. Hmm. 
So, yeah, you know, unfortunately, Hackdos again can't. Wait, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that, right? Oh, you can't. You, you can't. Yeah, okay. Maybe they do want to do that. <laughs> You can't, you can't even block. So if I get down Arnie and then boast it, it also goes up to six power, which is uh, certainly something. Certainly something. If I could, if only, if only I could put this Embercleave on the Arnie. That would give us the ball game. But I can't. So we'll just toss down the Arnie. Arnie the Carney. Now, again, we can give him six power, which means he could take out the turret grid. I think we got a swing with Arnie. But if we do, he's going to get blocked by the, the kitty cat there, right? Like, guaranteed going to get blocked by the cat. Goes up to seven power. You know, Arnie, I'm going to need you to just talk, just hold back a minute. If I can get an Ember Cleave on you, buddy, you'll, you'll be set. So, just hold thy horses. I don't know what they're planning with the Colossal Plow, but it's not a 4 CMC card, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Alright, they're down to 7, I'm down to 12. They do have a Plow, they can gain some life, and a lot of cards come next turn. Um, you know, I'm thankful that the, the Kroxa can't escape. Scrying one to the top, that's a bummer. That's a that's a whole bummer. <laughs> Alright, be merciful. Izer or Elzer, or... I don't, I don't know what your name is. <sighs> okay, they're yep. Uh, alrighty. Well, it was it was fun. It was a fun one. If only, if only the woodpecker saw was a something, as something, as something. If I, you know, basically, if I could just draw lands for my top end creatures, or just not draw only top end creatures. Either way would be good. Oliver four 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 five <laughs> four 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 four. Anyways, we are gonna keep this hand. We got a speaker. We got a selfless. It's some nice action. What I might do is drop Trion. I can drop Selfless and Speaker on the same turn. <clears throat> and this way we get the tap land out of the way. We are losing one point of damage off of this, so, you know, I guess it's really a matter of what you value. Of course, now that I see Winota, I'm like, oh, ho, ho, I made the correct decision. <laughs> That's just how it goes. Anyways, happy to see her. Um, you know, two turns till she can come on, join the party. Yorvo. Uh oh. All right, back to my turn. More lands? I'm not a fan. <laughs> uh, so no attacks. We're gonna take a little bit on the face here, a little bit on the Chinaruski from the Yorvo. That's all right. If we can get a good proc off with Winota, I won't even be mad about it because we can sacrifice that selfless and in return we'll get a stalwart uh, Valkyrie. There's a battle mammoth. You hate to see that. You really hate to see that. Oliver swinging in. We got to take that one on the chin. Du -du 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 -du. Let me draw a card. Okay. That's, that's not too bad. Winota, go! You gotta hit me something good here. Nothing! <laughs> oh no, 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 what are you doing? That's not the agreement we had. <laughs> okay, well. It's alright, now we have a creature. We can exile and get down the stalwart. We can also get down Heliod. Lotus Cobra. We are going to block that Yorvo this turn uh, with Speaker. So. My goodness, that's a big great hinge. It's a great, great hinge. All right, so we'll block. Give it a 15, then minus 6, 9. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm actually not a huge fan of this song, so I am just going to pass her along. Um, so that's an Ember Cleave there, which is really nice if we were in a little bit better position to actually get that down. I think we still got to go for the Stalwart. Plus Heliod. 
How far are we off? We're too off from the Heliod. Can't really afford to swing it with you. That's going to deal with that. Things aren't looking great. But, you know, it's mono green. They got a Yorvo and a Battle Mammoth right out the rip into a Great Hinge. So, yeah, what, what, do, we, what do we expect to do, you know? <laughs> All right, GG. I, I don't even know what to say at this point. You, you're a clown. You're a clown, Oliver. And I love it. I love clowns. Well, <laughs> let me take that back. Let me take that back. <laughs> Kima? Kima? I don't know. I both love and hate this hand. I, lo I love the curve, the curvature. One, two, buckle my shoe. Um, but I hate I hate the lands. I do doth hate the lands. Maybe we'll draw into some, and uh, it'll just be uh, happy days. Anyways, we do have two one drops here, so I can go ahead and drop the speaker this turn, usher next turn. I don't think it really matters which one we drop first. Both are pretty valuable. One deals more damage, one gains us more life. You know, it's really just a matter of what kind of player you are. I'm more defensive. I like gaining life more so than dealing damage. You know, that's just uh, it's just the motion of the ocean. Yeah, it's probably better with this deck specifically to deal the damage, given we are a Winota deck. Uh, but but again, you know, you know, you don't. Don't let anyone tell you how to live your life unless it's your you know your parents or your your guardian or your your life coach obviously they're they're there to tell you how to live your life to a degree anyways um you know we got a pretty stacked hand here now i just need the lands to go along with it you're not a land <laughs> you you silly you silly goose so we could start creating those human warrior creature tokens not a huge fan of that but um eh. You know, this is a really awkward position to be in. If I could have more than two lands, that'd be cool, game. Not gonna lie. I would take a third land in a heartbeat. It would turn online a whole lot of stuff. We could, of course, get down the Righteous Valkyrie. Land of War, Visionary. I have a feeling that tonight's gonna be a good night. <laughs> I have a feeling that this, this elf deck is going to be really annoying for us to deal with. If not, okay, all right, you know, it's it's a tap land. It's not everything I want and then some, but it's something nonetheless. So I can swing it with you and you. You're gonna dot the fin though. Usher, look, buddy, we're just gonna leave you back for now, okay? Just just for right now. Okay, they didn't, they didn't block. Not gonna lie, if they did, if they had, I could have used season, discarded a guard, and then got down a stalwart Valkyrie as I could have discarded a creature and then of course paid that mana. Elder Elder G, the good old E G, not to be confused with the O G. So we have three. If I play you down, that goes to four. Oh, so very close. So very close. You're 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 nothing right now, Arnie. I gotta play the righteous Valkyrie. Gots to, has to, must to. Right. And no attacks. Now we do have an Ember Cleave just chilling over there, which I would absolutely love to get down. Next turn, of course, we're going to have the Heliod popping up front, which is great. Heliod plus Season gives us a lot of good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. Because every time, every time I get something, you know, every time I get something nice, they're like, no, fuck you. Alright, well, hit me with the Elder Gargaroth. I guess I'm just, you know, fucking blocking all out. I am just blocking all out. Whoa, 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 seasoned. <laughs> Waste your turn, goddammit. Yeah, it, I, I'm not gonna let you have that. That's crazy. That is crazy. Arnie is good and a, a great surpriser here. These two, ooh. I think I would prefer them over Arnie though. Arnie is just such a such a huge investment. All right, so this way we get to keep the season hollow blade. We get to take out their uh, their elder Gargaroth. So take that, you fat beast. Oh, that is a beautiful draw. If I'm being honest. So pay this. It doesn't really matter what we exile because we're not a graveyard deck. We'll get one of you down. Pay this. Again, doesn't really matter. We're not graveyard. Get you down. Beautiful. B-E-A-U-T-Full. 
Now, Heliod's only going to be at four still. That's a little bit of a bummer. If I swing in here, we're probably still fine, right? I could I could discard Heliod. We have an Ember Cleave on the backup. Get him. Get to thy enemy. All right, so they're down to 13. <sighs> okay. And thankfully, they don't have a ton of creatures with which to use the Death Touch. I really thought that was going to be their plan, like create a 3-3 three, three green beast. But as soon as I saw that they hit draw a card, I was like, oh, this is... This is what I'm doing. Elder Gargaroth coming back to the battlefield. It was short-lived. It was incredibly short-lived. <laughs> oh, boy. My turn. My turn, my turn, my turn. Drop Heliod, swing in with three. That's not enough. That is not enough. So Shatter Skull, I could deal two. Not really enough either. Heliod coming down. Not online, though. Big, big bummer there. Big, huge, monumental bummer. I guess, I guess, I guess. I'm just going to swing in with the Season with the Embercleave available. Or do I swing in with Stalwart as well? Just all in swing. How much do you value that Gargaroth, mate? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say mate. Anyways, um, they're going to gain 3 life, go back to 16. So if I play this, you deal 8. You can take that out, no problem. I really got to take out the Gargaroth, though. I gots to. <clears throat> so you go here. I want to make sure to keep you alive. I want to keep that Heliod as well, so... It's just the way things gotta be. So we'll also deal two damage through to them. We'll get through this Gargaroth again, might I add, once again. They're back to 13. We have things that can equip Embercleave on the next turn. Deal eight. Yikes. <laughs> just absolutely freaking bracken yikes. Oh, no. <laughs> What's a man got to do to win? Just just have a simple game of magic. <laughs> oh, fuck me. All right. Give me those poison counters. Fuck yeah. What are we up to? Four? Pew, pew. <laughs> Another land. Well, that is the way the cookie crumbles. But put Ember Cleave on the season and just swing right in. We could deal four, eight. They probably block the Angel with the Gargaroth and just gain life. You know, if you want my honest opinion, this game is gone. Like, pretty, pretty far gone. Uh, all things considered. We're going to get down to Heliod here. And I think that's it. We can gain life from it, but... You know, I'm just we're just not having the best of luck this morning, but that's all right. That's all right. Some some days you you do a little a uh, little worse for wear than others and you, you just do okay. <laughs> Magic is about having fun and I feel like too often people Well, I'm I'm at least happy to know that they're playing a fucking clown fest of a deck. <laughs> I like it. We've seen two really awesome opponent decks today. Choose a card to put into your opponent's hand. Yeah, you can have you can have the Bala. Why would I give you? You don't you don't even have good options. <sighs> I I hate people. I hate people. You had such a nice deck lined up, and then and then you you pull out a binding in a Bala. Ugh! Come on! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> 